What's up, EO Hackers? Welcome to the CS Joseph Podcast. Today's question, how can I motivate an ESTP to change for the better, to be all about self-improvement, but also to not be a toxic person? Uh, fascinating Acolyte question. Uh, thank you to the uh, Acolyte user who asked this question. It's nice to get ESTP questions because a lot of people don't realize this, but ESTPs actually watch uh, this channel and listen to the podcast more out of all of the types. And uh, we know this based off of statistics uh, pulled off by uh, Ucha and our previous personality tests that uh, ESTPs out of everyone seem to make up a very large amount of the people that actually consume the content and uh, uh, you know use the test and, and to type themselves, etc. So, which is pretty cool. I get to help my fellow TI parents, especially since ESTPs have it really rough uh, in life. And I think ESTP men, well, actually ESTP women, especially because they're so masculine. I think ESTP women probably have it the actual hardest out of everybody. I mean, I could say ESTP men have it super hard too because of uh, just how society is structured against men right now. But uh, ESP women have it extremely hard. Like, like they grow up the tomboy. Their whole family never believes they'll actually become mothers or be in a stable relationship. And, uh, and they think they're going to bring their tomboyish behavior into a marriage. And just in the, like they're incapable of being feminine. But what people don't realize is that ESTPs end up growing into the femininity that they need to be. Or growing into the masculinity that they need to be you know, in terms of personal responsibility eventually. But how do you motivate an ESTP into being responsible? How do you motivate them into like not being toxic? That's where this act like question came from. So great question. I'm very happy to answer it. It's actually multiple strategies uh, to utilize. Um, the first strategy I'm going to share, um, it, it does it does work, but it requires it has a it has a huge prerequisite. You have to have a lot of personal experience. You know, like if you're like an SI user or a lot of observational experience um, you know, from an expert sensor and you gotta be able to just watch the ESTP and how they behave over time. Or if you're an introverted sensor, how you yourself become a memory totem to them. Because like ENFJs, ESTPs, extroverted Templars, really treat the people closest to them like crap. They just do. They really treat the people closest to them like crap compared to other people. Cause like, when they see new people in their life, they're like, ooh, shiny. So they end up treating other people that are not in their family or not in a relationship with oftentimes better than their uh, sexual partners or better than their lovers, better than members of their own immediate family. And it's because it's like, ooh, shiny, there's this new person. You know, I want to be impressive, right? Because ESTPs, they always lead with their ISTJ shadows need to be impressive to other people ISTJs are all about being impressive and making a very good first impression right because as much as ESTPs don't really care about what other people want they all secretly want to be wanted because that's their expert intuition demon that is the lesson of their demon so then their demon is trying to teach them hey you need to be more desirable etc and that's important that's really important to ESTPs. They may not admit it because it's very unconscious because it's the lowest part of their unconscious. But eventually in their life, if you actually talk to them, they're the most frustrated when they're left out. They don't like being left out. And being left out is akin to feeling unwanted, right? They hate it when people leave them out. So much so that they immediately respond with their Templar mirror and go out of their way to leave out those people. Or it's like, oh, you're going to go have fun there? Well, I'm going to grab all these other people that have more fun than you. You know, that's, that's what they always do. They always respond that way whenever they perceive that they are slighted. And as a result, ESTPs out of all the 16 types are the most likely to become indignant. And indignant means responding negatively to perceived maltreatment. If they are perceiving, and it could be, and it's usually an assumption, they're perceiving that they're being treated poorly by other people, they will treat people poorly in response. But 
what if those people just look like they're treating them or mistreating them and they're not actually mistreating them? What happens when it's a, uh, a, uh, an assumption? Well, that's how an ESTP can end up being toxic, basically. But this first technique to motivate them to being less toxic or motivating them to change for the better, you have to have a ton of experience. You have to be a member of their immediate family or you have to be their lover or you have to be a really, really close friend. A friend that they'd actually be willing to listen to because you have a lot of experience with them. You have rapport with them. And that rapport, that rapport really matters. It matters in a big way because they know, their TI parent can't deny that you know what you're talking about because of the amount of experience you have with them to the point where you can even cite examples of poor behavior on their part in the past because they're always going to ask you for specific examples. And if you can't offer specific examples in response, like an ISTJ, AKA their golden pair, or an INFP, AKA their natural pair, would actually be able to do in the context of um, a friendship or a relationship or a family member, they're just going to automatically dismiss you with their TE critic and they're going to continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over in their life, especially because they go out of their way, usually, to run away from their own failure. Especially if their subconscious developed, then they really are extra afraid of failure, extra afraid of rejection, and anytime they do fail, they choose not to admit it because they want to run away from that failure. Because if they admit that failure, especially audibly, it's like become this, all of a sudden it's real, then all of a sudden they have to change. And they'd rather run away from a situation. They would rather assume it's better for them to not be around and run away. It's like, oh, I broke your toy, so I'm going to run away from you because you're better off with me not around. When the reality of the situation is, the ESTB needs to realize they need to have the guts to stay put and fix what they broke instead of just running away. Because that'll just cause SI users to hate them and SI users to go out of their way to not share anything with them anymore and actually leave them out. To which the ESTP would respond with, well, you're leaving me out. Well, I'm going to leave you out too. And I'm going to make you feel unwanted. Even though it was the ESTP who caused the problem to begin with. This happens all the time. With every single ESTP I've ever met in my life, they all do this. Regardless of subconscious or unconscious development, this is how they behave. And it's really frustrating, albeit annoying, right? So... That ends up, you know, snowballing and getting worse and worse and worse over time. Much worse. More worse. Uh, it's a huge problem. So let's say like you're a friend with them or you're their lover. You've been around them for a long time. And it's time to speak up. This is what you do. You got to say it this way. You can't list out to an ESTP everything that they did wrong and then label them a piece of crap because they behave X, Y, Z. What you have to do is you have to provide some type of FI sympathy, real or not, emulated or real, it doesn't matter. But you gotta say like, look, I know you're better than this. I know that you're far more capable than that. And oftentimes, oftentimes, people don't even realize, they don't even realize that that's all it takes. You gotta tell them like, hey, you know, you were good at this particular time or you were great at this particular time. I know you have good in you. I know that you're capable of doing it. I just don't understand why you continue to choose to be alienating to me and other people in your life, especially the people that are closest to you. I know there's good in you. I know there's conflict in you. Let go of your hate, right? Like what Luke Skywalker said to his TI parent father, Darth Vader. Now, I know I previously said that Darth Vader was an ESTP. I was wrong. I was corrected. He's actually an ENTP. Uh, an ISTP in my life uh, questioned that and I realized that they were correct and uh, we actually have some content coming out in the near future to discuss that in the form of a live stream. I might actually do it next Tuesday. But that's the thing. That's what ends up happening basically over time. So that's the first technique. You have to recognize, because the every child so desperately wants recognition, you have to be able to recognize the good that they have within themselves. So that's, um, that's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. You gotta, you gotta be like, I know there's good in you. And you gotta tell them that. And then tell them, 
remind them of the times they have been good so they're like, oh, oh, I just got to keep doing those things over and over, then I'll be good. Yeah, great. Because ESTPs, they already reject themselves. They're already the most external of all the types other than INFJs because they're lust types, you know, and they're only going to behave and mirror the feedback, negative feedback or positive feedback that they get. So it's really hard. They're just pure mirrors. And if they and if they're and if you're frustrated with them, they're going to mirror frustration back. But yeah, be frustrated with them, but show them that they have the potential for being good because they've already established the precedent in the past for being good to you in the past. Remind them how good they were before. So that's the first technique, but it requires that you have personal experience with them to be able to cite, you know, like what ISTJs do, cite your sources, you know, like what INFPs do, cite your sources. You have to cite your source of the times that you've seen them behave good and good to you, and they will rise to the occasion. A lot of people, though, don't have the patience for that with ESTPs. This is why ESTPs oftentimes end up in sexual relationships with ISTJs and INFPs because those two types out of the 16 have, um, and even also uh, ISFJs, their pedagogue type, their companion type, those types have uh, the patience to basically put up with their failure. The patience to put up with failure. And uh, the patience to be around there and remind them of when they have been good in the past. That's how an ESTP ultimately feels love. Yeah, sure, they have their quality time love language, which actually is quality activities, which is what they really, really, really like. But to really, really, truly love them, you gotta be patient enough to be able to take the good and the bad because they're going to fail. And they need to be with people in their life that can be patient with them during their failure and also be patient with them enough to remind them of when they were good people earlier in the friendship, earlier in the relationship. They all need this. And if you're not gonna do this for an ESTP, you're going to fail. You are setting them up for failure. And that's, at that point, that's when I would say it's technically your fault, not theirs, because you are the one setting them up for failure because you are the one who is failing to communicate. Great, that sucks. You know, it sucks for them too. And that's like you shooting yourself in the foot. You're not going to have a good relationship with them. You're not going to have a good friendship with them. It's just not going to happen, right? It's just not. So that's one technique. That's one technique. Uh, the next technique um, is you got to remind them that, or at least help them, help them become desirable. Remind them that, you know, yeah, ESTPs, they're the most lonely of all the types. They are the loneliest. They are absolutely the loneliest. Because at least an INFJ, they can get pretty lonely too, but they have FE parent, they have SE inferior. So they're less likely to be lonely. But an ESTP, they are the loneliest of the 16 types, hands down, because of TI parent. And they're just so alienating other people, they often are forced to walk the path of the lone wolf, even though... They're actually intrinsically weak. They have a hard time going up to the counter and introducing to themselves to the new person, even though they are initiating, especially if they're like a woman, because they're afraid of rejection, especially if their subconscious developed, which is even worse. And it ends up getting worse and worse and worse for them. And they need people around them to be able to break the ice. ESTPs really struggle with breaking the ice. And that too is another reason why they're so lonely. So you, if you're close to them, if you're a family member, if you're a deep, close friend, if you're in a sexual relationship with them, give them tips on how to be more desirable. Show them, tell them what makes them desirable to you, and then also tell them how they can be desirable to other people. And sometimes, if you're an SI user and you're working hard to be desirable yourself, share your ability to become desirable yourself with the ESTP. And that will also motivate them to improve because it's like, oh, we can have this shared experience where we're both becoming desirable at the same time. Wow, that's awesome. And they will definitely, definitely get on board with that. Definitely. That's super important. Super important to do that. And that too also requires patience. The patience of an SI optimistic to a point to be able to stick around and be able to weather their storm. 
because they're very stormy because Expert Sensing Hero is extremely stormy. You gotta weather their tempest. You gotta weather their failure. Remind them how they've been good in the past. Give them that justification and that absolution that they're looking for because it's like, yeah, you're really failing right now, but you really succeeded in the past. You succeeded here, here, and here. Oh yeah, they're hella motivated then because it's like, oh, I actually did do that. Oh, I don't have to reject myself anymore. Oh, I don't have to choose to be lonely before because I succeeded in this social area or in this thing or with this creation in the past. I actually did make a really good experience. And that's amazing. And they all need that. All ESTPs need this. So make sure that you are taking responsibility and giving it to them so that they can take responsibility to improve and grow as human beings. They'll even tack their identity onto this. You showing them where they've succeeded, they'll tack their identity on those, uh, those, uh, those successes. They also tack on the, their identity on how they themselves can become more desirable. Sure, they don't really care about other people's choice and they don't really care about being desirable, but they will care to be desirable because you, they see and observe you caring to be desirable and because you are caring to be desirable they too naturally because they're mirroring you will want to become desirable as well right that's how that works that's why that works and every ESTP out there they need this they need this from the people closest to them that's why they so desperately want to be the leader of their wolf pack because their wolf pack is what makes them into a better person you can see this in uh, the uh, uh, Mr. O'Leary, the uh, the ESTP gang leader of the Irish in the uh, show on HBO Max called Warrior. Uh, highly recommend that show. It's a really great uh, testament to ESTP behavior. You might want to check that out. There's one other strategy to do, and this strategy I saved it for last because. It's what you do when you're desperate. It's what you do when you're actually potentially going to be walking away from a friendship, walking out on them as family, or walking away from them as their lover, where you're just so frustrated and you have literally nothing to lose because you're basically done with the relationship, especially as an SI user, and you're just done. This really, this is like the, this is the last resort. If you've tried the other techniques, but this technique is not gonna work, this is the last resort. And what you do, is you start comparing them to other people. Other people in your past. Other people that have been successful with you. Other people that have given you a good experience. Other people who have been memorable to you. And you start talking about other people's success. And then you tell them how they too can be successful if they mirror those other successful people in your life, in your past. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh dang, I actually have a path and a plan to move forward because ESTPs can't plan anything because here's this thing ESTPs they're lost they're lost in life they are clueless I'm sorry but like they have TI parent but just because they have TI parent don't mean they ain't clueless ESTPs are clueless AF if not some of the most clueless of all the types they are insanely clueless and they never really want people to know how clueless they are so they can really only accept people that are closest to them to actually talk to them about how clueless they actually are because they are clueless, insanely clueless. So if you're at this desperate point where you're about to walk out on them, start comparing them to people who have been successful with you in the past and how they've had a good relationship with you in the past uh, and how you were able to invest in those people in response to that and the good things that you were able to do in response to what those people were doing for you and how that was a great friendship or how that was a great sexual relationship or how that was a great family situation. That way, the ESTP can copy that behavior with you because then all of a sudden they have a plan. Oh, if I just do these things that these other people did uh, to, uh, uh, you know, uh, to my lover or to my child or, or whatever, if, if I just do these things, then I'll be successful too. And then their natural artisan creativity will come out and they'll actually improve upon those experiences and give something better to you. You just have to make sure that as an SI user that you're not being a pussy and are actually willing to share that information with the ESTP. Even if you have to go into the gory details, gory details about how things were at a particular date or gory details about how things were in a church situation, 
that was actually a thing. Uh, or, or even uh, sexual performance details with past lovers, that kind of stuff. Because ESTP is just like, they, they, they fail and they know that they failed and they just, they just want to run away and just go into a hole or get away from you because they're like, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm failing. You have to help outline a plan based on past good experiences, happy memories that you've had, so that they can learn how to be memorable and, and give you quality experiences. So they can have their love language with you. So that they too can feel loved by you because they know that you're, they're giving you a quality experience, a shared quality experience that you two have. And they're going to be creative and make it their own because that way they feel like that they have their thing with you that is unique to you and them. It's absolutely critical you do this for ESTPs. I'm so happy an ESTP had the guts to ask this question. I'm so happy. Reminder, folks, if you want your questions answered uh, with uh, YouTube videos and podcast episodes, well, become an Acolyte member. csjoseph.life forward slash members. Become a journeyman member, then an upgrade to Acolyte, or go to csjoseph.life forward slash portal if you are a journeyman member, an upgrade to Acolyte from there. One question a month becomes a video here on YouTube or on the podcast as a response, and then everyone in the audience can learn together. So ESTPs end up, as a result of using these three techniques, ESTPs will end up becoming literally the best person in your life. They, they, they'll end up outperforming everyone else because they're outcome focused. They know that they're going to get a really good outcome, that they're going to perform, that they're not going to be failing you anymore, that they're not going to be set up for failure anymore. And then as a result, they'll end up having the best friendship, the best sexual relationship, the best family connection because what they want more out of life is connectedness. What they want more out of life is uh, intimacy. And you are giving them the roadmap, the path forward to being more intimate with you. Every ESTP on the planet needs that because when they have that, they actually do feel connected to you and they no longer have to feel lonely ever again. And that's why it's so key. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching and listening and I'll see you guys on the next episode.